In February, we celebrated Tootsie's first birthday. She carried on a family tradition of smashing her fist into her birthday cake. Grandma, who believed in handing out gifts for everyone, not just the birthday person, brought me a four-color four ballpoint pen and Fudge, a new brain, a new brain pumpkin book. Read, Fudge told Grandma. She took him on her lap and read him the latest story about Uriah and one of the Brain Tumpkins characters. I used to really like his books. When I was a little kid, I said. I'm not a little kid, Fudge reminded me. Next year, I'll be in first grade. You want to see a little kid look at the birthday girl? The birthday girl was, si the birthday girl was sitting in her high chair, making a mess. Grandma had brought her a new baby proof cup, one that refused to turn over no matter how hard Tootsie tried. Finally, Tootsie screeched, picked up the cup, and dumped her milk over her head. Tootsie's first birthday party could go down as a real catastrophe, I said. What's a catastrophe? Fudge asked. It's when something goes wrong, I said. Or when everything goes wrong, Mom added. Talk about catastrophes. Six weeks later, Tootsie learned to walk. At first, it was just a few feet at a time. From mom to dad, or from me to fudge. But pretty soon, she was toddling all over the place. Sometimes she'd crash land, and if no one was watching, she'd laugh and start all over again. But if she caught one of us looking at her, she'd start bawling and wouldn't stop until she got an arrow, until she got, and until she got a cookie. And Tootsie wasn't the only one crash landing. Fudge, Fudge was learning to ride his bicycle. One of his major problems was stopping. Instead of using his brakes, he kept trying to jump off while his bike was still going. I was wrong when he told him he might get a couple of scraped knees. Elbows, knees, and head, and head were all, were more like it constantly, but he refused to give up. He was really determined to get to ride to school. Finally, toward the end of April, mom and dad decided that Fudge had mastered the art of bike riding, well enough to ride to school with Daniel, who had learned on his own front lawn, just the way he said he would, without a bruise or a scrape anywhere. And it would have turned out okay if only Fudge had remembered to use his brakes and he got to the bike rack at school, but he didn't. So he crashed into the rack, knocking down a pile of bikes, and he wound up with scraped elbows, scraped knees, and torn jeans. Don't tell mommy, Fudge said, or she'll never let me ride to school again. I think mommy's going to notice anyway, I said. You're a mess. I carried him into the nurse's room. Miss Elliot washed off his cuts and bruises with peroxide, and when she did, Fudge let out a howl. Not that I blamed him, I could practically feel the sting myself. But Fudge didn't stop with one howl. He kept it up, making such a racket that Mr. Green, the principal, heard him and came running down the hall. What's going on here? Mr. Green said. Scrape knees and elbows, Miss Elliot said. Scrape knees and elbows, Mr. Green repeated. When I was a boy, I had scraped knees and elbows all the time. He used to roller skate and fall down week after week. Fudge sniffed and said, too bad you weren't any good at it. Who says I wasn't any good at it? Mr. Green asked. You just said you were always falling down, Fudge said. That's because I took a lot of chances, Mr. Green said. Now I want you to hurry back to your classroom because we're having a surprise visitor in a little while. Who is it? Fudge asked. It's a very famous man someone who writes and illustrates children's books. His name is Brian Tumpkin. Brian Tumpkin. Brian Tumpkin is alive? Fudge asked, alive and well and on his way to our school. Brian Tumpkin is alive? Fudge said again. I never knew that. Did you know that, Peter? I never thought about it, I said. Mr. Green faced Miss Elliot and said, Lucky break for all of us that he's agreed to do a program for our girls and boys. I'm afraid I don't know who he is, Mr. Elliot said. Miss Elliot said. You really don't know? 
Fudge asked. Wow, you must not know so many things. First, you put peroxide on my cuts without bluing to take away the sting. And now you don't know who Brian Tumpkin is. I never blow on cuts, Miss Elliot said. You can spread germs that way. Mommy always blows when she puts on peroxide. Yes, well, Mr. Green said, let's get back to our class now. It's almost time for our special program. At 10 o'clock, we all filed into the auditorium. Then Mr. Morgan, the librarian, introduced Brian Tumpkin, telling us that millions of kids have read and loved his books. Now, lucky we are that he, ha he was able to make a last-minute stop at our school. Okay, that's where we're going to end off. And then I will see you next time with a different read aloud. Bye.